Peggy and Michelle, who I will show you today as they are today, because they came to my event in New York. Uh, three First Ladies and Bella on stage, holding the torch that was brought from Seneca Falls, New York, site of the Women's Suffrage Convention in, 19, in 1848. It was brought by Relay to Houston for the opening of the conference. And um, here it is, it's arrived on stage. And then uh, Gloria Scott, who was head of the Girl Scouts of the USA, gaveled the conference open with Susan B. Anthony's gavel from the 1848 convention. Uh, Bella, who was the presiding officer of the conference, and Coretta Scott King applauding, uh, as well as Betty Ford applauding. Um, this is a delegate waiting online. So I photographed both the, the women who are better known and the women who are not so well known, but I do know these women's names. So I'm still hoping to get in touch with at least the women in my photographs. Um, de California delegates. Colleen Wong on the right was 17. And Alice Bebo said she was a grandmother and she knew Colleen and from home and she was chaperoning her through the conference. But how a 17-year-old got to be elected a delegate is a wonderful thing. And uh, I just talked to another 17-year-old who was elected a delegate. Uh, who, when she arrived at the conference, was 18, and she said, uh, she said her professor, she had just gone to, gotten into uh, Brown, and she said her professor was very unsympathetic, uh, as a male professor would not give her credit or allow for her absence or whatever. And she dropped out of science, she changed from science, pre-med to law, because she was so discouraged by the C that she got in his course. And then she said, the next year, another science professor uh, convinced her to go back into science. And she's, she said she was one of the first 40 female neurosurgeons, either in this country or in the world, I'm not sure which. But I just talked to her you know, a couple weeks ago. So it's, it's very exciting to talk to even the very young women who were delegates. Um, this is, we were talking about Bella and Jimmy Carter, so this is, you can see the body language. <laughs> this is at the White House. This is Bella lecturing Jimmy, and Jimmy is kind of standing there thinking, when can I fire this woman, <laughs> you know? I mean, it was, uh, it was not a, a good relationship. Um, Midge Costanza, who's standing next to Rosalind Carter, uh, with a white dress and black or whatever color belt, uh, she she be, she took Bella's place afterwards for for a short time. I'm not sure. Um, Congresswoman Barbara Jordan of Texas gave the keynote address at the conference. So when you saw Coretta and Betty Ford applauding, they were applauding uh, Barbara Jordan's speech. It was a little bit out of order there. And this is the congresswoman signing autographs afterwards, mobbed. Uh, the conference hall is huge. You can see the, um, it's like really a national conference with delegates from all 50 states and all the territories as well. Um, this is one of the first secretaries of state or maybe the first secretary of state of the United, not the United States, but a state, Pennsylvania. See Dolores Tucker reading Robert's Rules of Order to clarify a point. Congresswoman Elizabeth Holtzman, who was in Congress at the time. This was a hotel room, late night commission powwow um, with the different commissioners. The woman, the Asian woman on the right uh, kneeling is uh, Rita Elway Brogan, and I'm in touch with her. She's a top, she runs a big PR firm, National PR. And uh, some of the other women are Catherine Clarenbach, who's over here. And uh, at Catherine's feet is uh, Lee Novick, who now Rabbi Leah Novick, who was the conference coordinator. <coughs> Hi, welcome. 
the Newport contingent has arrived. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Gloria Steinem with a woman with a similar style. Everyone had a similar style to Gloria Steinem, if they could possibly manage it. So here uh, you can see from the back of the hall or midway through the hall, uh, Gloria Steinem on TV, uh, because she's actually speaking on stage, but this was a monitor for her. And Gloria Steinem talking to Lucy Commissar, who has a great muckraking website. Has anyone heard of Lucy Commissar? Yeah, she does uh, corporate muckraking, or muckraking. And then Rita Elway Brogan. And so those three women all came in November to my exhibit, which was a, you know, re-showing of the photographs. And this carpenter, unfortunately, is deceased in the foreground, but she started the National Women's Political Caucus, a great and dynamic woman. Jean Stapleton, commissioner, um, speaking at a press conference. And uh, Jean Westwood, who was co-chair of the Democratic Party, uh, calling herself another Mormon for the ERA. She's from Utah. And this is the co-chair of the Republican Party, Mary Crisp. Has anyone heard of Mary Crisp? Um, Mary Crisp was one of the commissioners who quit when Bella was fired by Jimmy Carter. She quit in protest and uh, she, was, she was really drummed out of the Republican Party at that point for having taken such a, such a bold stand uh, in support of Bella. And she went on to um, head the National Abortion Rights Action League, NARAL. So she has a very interesting career. <clears throat> Jill Ruckel's house on the left. Jill Ruckel's house was the first um, presiding officer of the commission, the role that Bella Abzug later took. Um, and that was because when President Ford signed the legislation for this conference and for the creation of the commission, he chose a Republican woman to be the first presiding officer, as was the second, Elizabeth Athanasakos, who's at in her 90s and is still practicing law in Florida. So, Karen DeCrow with the sunglasses, who was president of NOW at a celebration. Some of the opponents to different parts of the plan. This woman is opposed to the gender equality program. Keep them in the closet, her sign says. Can you see the slides? Should we turn off any of the lights? Hi, no, okay, all right. Um, so a lot of the opponents to the plan of action wore these majority ribbons, representing their belief that they uh, were in fact the majority, the silent majority of, of Americans. And um, the, the needlepoint was across the board. <laughs> it was pro-plan and anti-plan delegates. I did a little sort of subset of photographs <laughs> of women doing needlepoint and different needle crafts. Here is Susan B. Anthony calling the question on the ERA. And um, so a lot of cheering in the hall and a few delegates sitting down, not participating in the celebration. Across town, Phyllis Schlafly organized a pro-family um, conference, which was, wasn't the three-day conference that the, the National Women's Conference was, but it was, uh, it was a one-day conference and it was very well attended. I think there were about 10,000 people there. And uh, I recently sent her this photograph and she emailed me back and she said, do you have other photographs of the conference? And I was like, no, I'm sorry. You know, Bella hired me, you didn't, you know. And, <laughs> but, um, no, but she's very, you know, she's very available. And actually, there's a, there's a woman who teaches women's history at UMass who's been very supportive of my work, and I've spoken in her class and so on. And, 
she's very interested in the theme of, of how, how the issue of family sort of got taken um, into, you know, a conservative and right-wing context. And um, so she wants to write about that and study that. And I said, well, why don't you call Phyllis Schlafly and get her opinion? And she's like, no, I don't want to talk to her. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but, you know, she's available. So anyway. Um, so here is the NASA booth. There was a huge exhibits hall, and NASA was recruiting, or at least raising awareness for as this as a, a future um, career for women. And I personally couldn't believe it. I saw this and I thought, oh, that'll never happen. And they were probably already training women astronauts at that time. And now there's no more NASA. So I guess if you live long enough, you see, <laughs> you see the end, not only the apogee, but the, you know, I don't know, it's very odd. Uh, a lot of women volunteered for duty at the conference. This is Pat Carbine, who started Ms. Magazine with Gloria Stein. Delegates from the different territories came, as well as from the states. This woman is the high chief of uh, uh, American Samoa, uh, mayor of Pango Pango. And her grandson and grandchildren have gotten in touch with me to put this photograph on their website different walks of life, different um, plans were presented. A lot of the women were busy caucusing, discussing their issues, and then celebrating as this celebration of the welfare rights plank. And um, this woman has a hard hat that reads pro-God, pro-family, pro-ERA. And uh, her grandson just wrote to me and asked for a picture. He wanted to send it, to give it to all his family for Hanukkah. So he was, he was not, he was decent. He asked me for permission and actually paid me. It's a miracle. <laughs> um, celebrating the passage of the ERA uh, plank with bras that say we didn't burn them. Uh, John Mac Carter and Betty Friedan. Is it Good Housekeeping or Ladies Home Journal? I think it's Ladies Home Journal. I think I have it mixed up with Cy Chastler, who was also there. <clears throat> I think I know this woman's name now. This is the delegation from American Samoa. Corinne Horball and Eleanor Smeal, two other future presidents of now, caucusing, signer for the deaf. Liz Carpenter. Um, introducing Maya Angelou to the three torchbearers, to Sylvia, Peggy, and Michelle. Maya Angelou wrote the statement, mission statement for the conference to form a more perfect union. And here she is speaking the statement. And it's all in that book, which I think should be republished. A lawyer delegate with her calling card, which is a rape whistle. Uh, Congresswoman Margaret Heckler on the left with um, Joe Ruckel's house. And I just was asked for some photographs of Joe Ruckel's house for a book that the Oregon Historic Commission is doing about her husband. <laughs> I sent, sent them permission to use them, but I said, why aren't you doing a book about Joe Ruckel's house? I mean, you know, she was Secretary of the Interior. Um, um, this is the conference hall again in jubilation. Now, I'm not going to show a lot of photographs of the New York State Women's Meeting, but before the conference there were state meetings in all the states and territories. And I, being from New York, was photographer for the New York State Women's Meeting. So these are just a, just a few photographs. This is Jean Stapleton, who was really involved not only in the national conference, but also in promoting the New York State meeting. And we know her as Edith Bunker and all in the family. I don't need to explain that to you. And if I was speaking to a younger audience, they would have no idea what all in the family is. So, 
Uh, Ruby D signing autographs on Wall Street. This is one of my favorite photographs, actually. Um, and Ruby D performing. Uh, Melba Tolliver. And I'll show you, when I show you the website uh, resources for what these women are doing now, I'll show you Melba Tolliver today. Uh, she was, this, here she's filing her report. She was the first uh, African-American anchor woman to um, be allowed to give her reports with her natural hair. And it actually took a battle for her to do that. Do you remember? She, um, she was reporting out of New York and she got an assignment to, photo to um, report on Trish Nixon's, uh, President Nixon's daughter's wedding. And she went to Washington and she decided to report with her natural hair. And when she came back, the station took her off the air. And they said, you are not going to appear again on camera unless you continue to slick your hair back or wear a scarf or, you know, have a permanent or wear a wig, which is what she had been doing before. And there was such an uproar in New York. This was in 1971. There was such an uproar from the public that the station did, was compelled to put her back on the air. And she says that's not her defining moment in journalism, but it certainly was, was a pioneering moment. Um, this is Viney Burroughs. She's on the cover of my book. And I just found out, I just found out who this woman was <laughs> because I had not realize that she's a, a great, I mean, she's obviously a, a fabulous performer, but I hadn't realized what her name was. And so I sent her a copy of the book, and I said, well, you're on the cover of my book. I hope you like it. And I'm happy to give you more copies of the book, and by the way, can I have permission to, for, you to, for you to be on the cover of my book? <laughs> And she emailed me back and she said, great photograph, wonderful book. Um, why don't you come to the theater with me? This was on a Monday about a month ago. She said, why don't you come to the theater with me on Thursday? And so I'm like, yes. So I went to New York and we went to a um, uh, theater, I'm trying to think of the piece. Um, but it was just so exciting to meet her and then to go out to coffee and cheesecake afterwards with her. And she did give me permission in writing to use her photograph on the cover of the book. So, oh, big sigh of relief. So, um, but she's had a, a fabulous career in theater, mostly writing her own one-woman plays because she found there were not good roles for African-American women representing what she wanted to represent. And she, she's probably written at least half a dozen, maybe more, um, one-woman shows about women's history. Um, thank you. Thank you. So I don't know what you want to do. I, 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 of course, there's more. I appreciate it. Um, but I don't know if you want to take a break and talk a little bit. I, I, what, what I thought would be fun to do would be to look at, I have some, I have some pages on my website where these women are today, some of them. And so I thought I would show you that. So shall we just segue into that? Okay, so let me uh, navigate this. Do I want to save the changes? have this all ready here. Okay, so this is my website, and actually there are a few pages, there are a few pages out there with the links. I mean, links on paper are meaningless, you know, but if you email me, I'll send you this. But anyway, it's basically, it's very easy if you go to my website, um, then you can go to a page called Spotlight, which is in two different places, actually. And on the Spotlight page, you'll see uh, some some stories that are explained more in